We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, and I'm a Partnerships Manager here at All Voices, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Today, I'm very excited to welcome our next guest, Philip Dana. He's the head of HR at Dendron. Philip, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for speaking with us today. If you could start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, including your pronouns and what's something that you enjoy doing outside of your job. Oh my goodness. So I'm Philip Dana, head of HR at Dendrion Pharmaceuticals. We are a prostate cancer hating group of people out of Seal Beach, California, Seattle, and Atlanta area with a national sales team. Um, a little bit more about myself. I'm a former Navy guy. And uh, what else can I tell you, Christina. What do you like to do outside of work? Oh, uh, well, I like playing with my pit bull. My wife and I have uh, uh, fostered and uh, rescued a few. And um, I like uh, scotch and cigars. And I love Seattle Seahawks. Go Hawks. There you go. That's good for me. And pronouns are he, him, and his, right? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for sharing a little bit about yourself. I One of the questions I want to start out with is a little broad, but in your opinion, with your years of experience in HR, how do you define company culture? Oh, so a company culture, a good one, is when you can create an environment where folks can bring their whole self uh, and their best self uh, to work on an everyday, daily basis. Um, a bad environment is one in which they cannot, and your, your business results are directly impacted, of course. Hard to have a high-performing culture and not have a high performing result there directly tied to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Company culture is related to the success of a company or talking about people in the workplace, whether it's virtual or in person that um, someone is kind of working at together. What differentiates your culture at uh, Dendrion? So we're, our values are, are initially centered around patient first. And so as a prostate cancer product producer, uh, our teams interact with older gentlemen who are in stage four prostate cancer. And it really is all about them. And very similar to some great retailers like Amazon who are customer obsessed, uh, our obsession is equal to our patients. And so we reverse engineer our thoughts, our behaviors, our processes, and our, folk, our business focus off of them. And if we continue to think about them every day, all day in our actions, I believe the results will come out uh, in a better fashion. Yeah, absolutely. I love that patient first and patient obsessed. Um, I think interesting to the business, you have both lab and corporate employees as well. So I also wanted to ask how you think about really company culture on a whole when you're bridging those two kind of communities together and really thinking about someone um, on like all the all teams of uh, Dendrion. Yeah, great question. As uh, head of HR of an organization, of course, I'm, I'm mostly focused on uh, helping define and support, uh, assimilate and onboard new folks into the Dendrion way, uh, the culture, the value, the mission, the vision, uh, how we execute as Dendrion teammates. But I do recognize that there are cultural differences between our Atlanta site and our Seattle site and our Seal Beach site. In fact, that's three of the four corners. And so culturally diverse um, employee base between the three. Um, and here we are on Cinco de Mayo. Luckily, I'm in Seal Beach, so we're going to have a, a killer potluck uh, today to celebrate. Oh, very nice. That's awesome. Um, I think that's great. And I think that's important for folks to hear as well who have a distributed workforce and folks aren't in one location all the time. Um, I know like this year has really transformed businesses due to COVID-19. I read in your bio, you're responding to everything that's happening. And we chatted a little bit in terms of caregiving for working mothers, Black Lives Matter mm. movement. How has, um, you know, Dendrion and like your strategy for HR and bringing on talent or just really any processes shifted because of everything that is going on all at the same time right now? Yeah, I think with my military background, I tend to focus on training, communication, and clarity of, of purpose. And so communication is key. We have several new leaders here at Dendrion, including a, a newer CEO and myself. I've only been here for a year and a half. And so through Black Lives Matter, through COVID-19, 
all the changes required, the conversations that are needed. Uh, we really uh, greatly increased our level of communication, the meetings, the roundtables, coffees with the CEO, uh, where there's no HR or other leaders in the room, just to have a free flowing, trusted conversation. Uh, we really poured a lot of fuel on a couple of our employee resource groups. Uh, we launched three culture committees uh, around wow. rewards and recognition, um, personal development and engagement. And then of course, as we discussed earlier, we conduct several surveys and a lot of extra emails. And in COVID, this one's a fun one. Uh, we went a little old school with a paper newsletter sent to everybody's houses. Um, and, and that was really appreciated because it allowed employees to share a lot of the highlights and the things we're doing with their families uh, in a written fashion. So it's interesting. Technology in some ways have really accelerated things during COVID, but uh, going back to some old school tactics uh, has helped as well. Yeah, definitely meeting employees physically where they are and sending something kind of thoughtful to their homes is, I think that's a nice touch to blending old school and technology as well. Um, but it sounds like there's a lot of transparent communication happening and two-way conversations, which is important. I know another topic of conversation that continues to come up in these interviews, but also just in general is burnout since folks are at home and there's it's harder to separate work and personal life. And um, I wanted to ask like what kind of resources or like how are you thinking about as the leader in HR preventing burnout amongst like uh, managers, but also the team overall. Yeah, I think once you establish a great culture, there's, a, you know, trusted conversations between you and your manager, and most likely your teammates as well. And so if you're struggling with childcare, or the or the crazy school schedules uh, that 57% of our employee base are dealing with right now, uh, that, that, that you have to rely on extra communication and transparency. But it also helps when you have a CEO or, or a leadership team that vocalizes that at all hands, like, hey, we're here to help. Uh, we're driving a level of flexibility that's unparalleled for us and, and our company. And we'll work with you individually uh, to do everything we can to make it work for both parties, the company, the business, as well as, as your individual needs. Uh, and that's, that's interesting. We've shifted a lot of work hours. We've been very flexible. Uh, we're blessed in the, in the pharmacy and bio life science industry. Our benefits tend to be pretty, pretty healthy uh, around EAPs. And, um, you know, we use apps for contests and fitness, uh, nutrition, uh, all those extra items that can help people reduce stress and stay productive. Yep, absolutely. Mental health, physical health. Um, and that's good to hear that it's also just, you know, related to challenges and just team building as well, which I think is an important part of company culture. I wanted to kind of go back to one of the things you mentioned earlier, too, and ask about gender trans diversity, equity and inclusion um, strategy right now. I know we talked about uh, how your women's ERG has been super active as well. And you mentioned other employee resource groups, but wanted to ask how um, you're really thinking about that at the company, too. Yeah, we're new in that journey here at Dendrion. Um, not new for me personally or many of the leaders that have recently joined the company. I'm a former diversity and inclusion leader at Sears Holdings out of Chicago, which were phenomenal programs. So over the years, I've had a chance to bring some of those practices along uh, to various companies. But here, the timing was amazing. Uh, one, we set, set out on a five-year journey towards becoming great place to work certified. And so a lot of the efforts uh, were already on the roadmap and we began moving in the direction of launching uh, the two biggest uh, for us based on our demographics, a women at work ERG called Rise and an African-American ERG called Aspire. And uh, those were you know, beginning to get up and running with guest speakers and big events coming up just in time for COVID. And what's interesting is COVID forced uh, Max Remote. We have manufacturing components where about half of our workforce has had to continue to come into work despite COVID. Um, uh, appreciate those folks. Uh, but the rest of us uh, you, jumping into MS Teams or Zoom and getting used to that type of interaction with everybody, it actually allowed our remote workforce, our sales and our three main sites to connect 
uh, deeper, faster, easier uh, in those types of efforts. So, uh, which were reflected in our engagement index scores going up seven points despite all the chaos uh, caused by the pandemic. So, uh, in some ways, COVID helped us, uh, which is really odd to say out loud. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes there is definitely within challenges, there's an opportunity to really think about how you're connecting with people. And it's good that folks still feel like they are engaged and other teams who are already working remotely or had a flexible schedule feel like they are, they're connected to the team. Um, what do you think along those lines too is really important to ensure that all team members do feel like they are included in the culture and really feel like there is a sense of belonging. I know you mentioned the role of the CEO is really important in leaders, but wanted to ask your thoughts about that as well, especially for new team members who are coming on and are like thinking about how they're experiencing the culture. Yeah, a lot of improvements in our onboarding and we still have a, a, a ways to go on that. Uh, it's a continuous um, e evolvement there. Um, I think too, in some of our leadership uh, uh, discussions, uh, staff meetings, and communications out to the org from the leadership team. At the beginning of COVID, it was really um, reinforcing good leadership of asking, how are you doing? And not accepting the standard, uh, oh, good. Uh, no, re <laughs> no, really, how are you doing? <laughs> no, really. um, sometimes when you, you ask it two or three times like that, you'll get, you'll get the truth. And uh, you know, I think that's definitely strengthened the word trust um, and if you can throw in a bunch of processes and ways to engage, um, my equation is trust plus engagement equals results. Um, I think that's beneficial. I think too, just at, continuously asking new hires that are bringing new ideas in from other organizations uh, to share those ideas with you, to be proactive. Um, you know, we survey all of our new hires, we, we survey um, different groups uh, around different topics. And, uh, and then of course, a lot of action planning based on the team. You can survey the org all you want, but if you don't do anything with, with the data collected, um, the org will go, go quiet pretty quick. So um, that's been very beneficial for us this last year. Yeah, absolutely. You can build that trust, ask for the feedback and get the feedback, but if nothing is done with it or employees don't feel like they are seen or heard, they will stop giving out, but it doesn't mean they don't have any thoughts to give. It just means they've stopped telling you, um, which which does not build trust or bode well for anyone. I know we discussed kind of the impact of employee trust and listening, but really wanted to ask how you see that manifesting at Dendrion um, as you continue to build out that culture. Why is it important to really employee listen and really take action on what they're what they're talking about? I mean, ultimately, uh, HR, we're supposed to be touchy feely, but the reality is um, I, I need to accelerate support and enable the business to execute. Uh, we're, we're a company. Uh, we have patience to serve and uh, and make a profit while doing it. And so, you know, ultimately, uh, trust and culture and performance are measured by the output of the business and, uh, you know, with some pretty clear define metrics there. Um, I've, I've never been a part of a high performance team that wasn't defined by both a great culture and great results. And so as we are improving our culture here at Denrion, the results are, are coming along with it, which is fantastic because this company, we've had a tumultuous past. Uh, we're on a, a clearly defined fourth chapter after uh, 18 years of existence, uh, new leadership team, a lot of new things. Um, and as we've been working on all these things we're talking about, uh, the results are starting to turn favorable and point in a great direction. So a lot of optimism right now. Yeah, and I know that you mentioned that some employees are continuing to work and have been throughout the pandemic, but yeah. how are you thinking about a, you know, a fully return to office strategy, a hybrid approach fully, flexible, uh, what does that look like for employees? Yeah, so just based on our location, of course we follow CDC guidelines and uh, local and state health agencies. Um, we're also FDA regulated based on what we do for a living. And so uh, a lot of our offices where I'm sitting today in HR are attached to manufacturing facilities. So a lot of our philosophies around uh, that come out of our COVID task force 
a group of leaders that meet on a regular basis is tied towards protecting the patients, protecting the product, uh, protecting our teammates, and protecting the building overall and providing an extremely clean, sterile uh, work environment. And that's been, uh, I, I, we went early, uh, earlier than most companies, I think, by about a week. And by getting uh, the non-production um, folks out of the buildings, working from home successfully, uh, just by sheer luck, we are already pretty far along in uh, having connectivity, a highly functioning VPN, enough gear, laptops, and everything to get out. Um, and so that worked that worked well for us. But uh, we're currently uh, here. We are in uh, May, and uh, we're in what we call yeah what we call phase three. And so I'm back in the office one or two days a week, but not full time yet. And so I, I predict, hopefully. Um, that we can throw some taco trucks and cornhole in the parking lot and welcome everybody back uh, by early July is, uh, is kind of what we're hoping for and planning for, fingers crossed. Yeah, definitely, fingers crossed that we're moving towards, moving towards that as well. Um, I wanted to kind of zoom out also and ask in your kind of what you're seeing in the world today as it relates to human resources and people teams, is there anything that you think that individuals and companies need to be aware of in terms of like trends so they can be successful in in the future yeah i think you know in the last 20 years we've added two generations uh distinct unique uh layers of talent into our workforce and so as people uh stay working longer in life into their 70s <laughs> and uh and you know the younger folks coming the early career folks coming into the workforce now i think it's critical that you have HR platforms and processes that uh, span uh, the entire spectrum. I know it's easy to say, but hard to do. And so tools, platforms, um, you know, like yours, as well as all the others that I mentioned in our earlier conversation, uh, HR systems, fully integrated, phenomenal reporting, mobile enabled, multi-device, um, everybody, uh, being able to understand it and use it. Uh, I think the, the companies and the platforms that are pulling ahead, um, you know, newer names like the Workdays of the World and the Bonus Least, um, I think uh, are able to evolve and iterate their products at a faster pace than the larger, slower um, teams uh, that really don't listen uh, proactively. They don't request feedback. Uh, from their customers and take quick action on it. And so those, those that are evolving and iterating the fastest are, are, are definitely pulling out in front right now. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of innovation happening in the field and listening doesn't just go through internally, external listening from customers. That 360 approach is super important. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to ask you as well is your kind of personal journey throughout the industry is, I'm sure you have many, but what is one of your proudest moments, um, either at Dendrion or another company, it could be big or small, but wanted to ask you as well. Oh my goodness. So knowing my background, I have to say, it, you know, at Sears Holdings and at Amazon, I was able to exploit my position in supporting veterans and their families and, and military right. spouses in the early days when not a lot of companies were really, really caught on to that phenomenal talent source yet. And so uh, nothing like being an HR uh, person and giving away jobs, um, impacting the revenue of the company in a positive way uh, by a defined demographic that companies were just starting to figure out, uh, as well as some fundraising and, and non-for-profit support. Um, so it's always fun. Uh, you know, when you work at a company like an Amazon, while it's scaling the ability to raise a talent bar and hire a ton of people um, is pretty, pretty good as well especially years later, over a decade later, it's, you know, by many marks, the most successful company on the face of the planet. And so it's always when folks say, you know, Phil, I heard Amazon's just a horrible, horrible place, horrible. I just laugh and say, again, how can it be so horrible when it's dominated uh, in so many different categories? Um, and then, uh, you know, life technologies. I think when I transitioned into life sciences, I kind of awoke this inner beast in me uh, to focus my career on higher purposes and impacting lives. And um, yeah, I think as I get older and uh, more senior, um, I think that becomes more important. 
that I really appreciate working for organizations uh, that are making a, a significant impact um, on, on, on lives, so. Absolutely, I mean, I think that speaks volume to the company that you are working at now, Dendrion, and also just the mission-driven companies as well, and your role in HR too. Um, one of the kind of aspects you brought up of one of your proudest moments is hiring talent, and especially folks who come with um, kind of military background and veterans as well. And I also wanted to ask if you have any advice, especially for larger companies who are looking to hire veterans and really source that talent. Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, step one, grab all your current veterans, so find them yeah. and, and put them on a call or in a conference room and, and say, hey, I, I, need, I need help. Uh, let's do this and let's do it well. Um, I think companies that grab a random recruiter or somebody in HR and try to program manage it um, are, are never as successful as uh, the former method. Um, don't, don't patronize veterans and have screaming eagles uh, and say you want to be vet friendly. Just stick to who you are, what your values are, and use uh, good talent acquisition processes. Don't worry about translating acronyms and uh, figuring veterans out. And then, of course, last but not least, it's just a really weird thing that I've watched over the years. Don't treat all veterans the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what a what a Navy nuclear submariner, uh, their culture and and how they're groomed, trained, and wired versus a pilot versus a spec ops leader are all completely different. And I, I wouldn't really ever think of stuffing them all in the exact same job and expecting the same result. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I think that extends to, to one community or group is never a monolith and it shouldn't be treated as such, especially in recruiting and telling your authentic story. People can oftentimes, uh, if not, you know, 99% of the time, tell if you're being authentic or uh, genuine or not as well. So definitely appreciate that advice for the folks who are listening. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on in our conversation that you want our listeners to know or any advice for folks who want to join uh, your team as well? No, I would just say, uh, you know, in career transition, and as you think about a career in HR or really anything, uh, the, the further you understand yourself and your why, your purpose, things in your life that are important to you. And of course, that generally changes uh, as you get older. Um, the easier it is to align yourself and network your way into a role or into an organization uh, that really can use everything you've got, bring your best self and your whole self to work. Bring your best self and your whole self to work. Love to love to hear it. Well, thank you so much uh, for being on the interview series. We really appreciate it and hope to speak with you soon. Thank you, Christina. Of course. And as a reminder at All Voices, we believe in the power of everyone at your organization to speak up and believe it's a requirement in order for folks to succeed at your organization. Talk to you later.